How about that? Fade away. Frazier over coming after him. Sister rejoining the. Yeah. Her prayers are being answered. That's a nice pass. How about that? Goodness. Tapping it back to Clemens. He is so clever. Williamson comes around. He's not getting back. It's on the 12. Across from the basket. He is fatigued. Woo. This is not only divine intervention. Williams with 10 points for the game. Eight and a half in this late flurry. Mostly by him. And a chance to go up by 13. Oh, look at this play. And Crutwig with the hands. Look at him, Emo. Why not? You deserve all the accolades. I don't want to say he's athletic, but goodness, does he know how to play basketball. Just great. Look at this kid. Another fairy tale ride is underway for Loyola Chicago and head coach Porter Moser on their way to the Sweet 16 and we've lost the number one seed for the first time in this tournament. That was yesterday and I, I'm i just telling you, man, it was so amazing to watch a team play so connected. So connected. Yes, sir. Defensively and offensively and then it was nice of Porter to get Tom Borwinkle to play in the middle of his team because Cameron Crutwood reminds me a lot of Borwinkle. Big guy, what soft hands, great great hands. Yes, but yep. what a passer. Yeah. And Porter joins us now from Indianapolis where his club is reveling in their upset win yesterday. And now it's on to get Oregon State in the Sweet 16. Porter, good morning. Uh, I know you probably didn't get a lot of sleep because you're just so fired up, but how you feel this morning, man? <laughs> oh, morning, guys. Uh, feel great. Feel blessed. Looking out the window here, and it's sunny in India. They got me in my bubble. I can't go outside. <laughs> but uh, no, it's great. It was, you know, it's fun to hear that the telecast. It was fun to hear what people say about Crutwig. And uh, you know, I've said it for a long time. You know, he doesn't pass the eye test, but he's a player, and the whole world's continuing to see it. And you know, what else was cool to hear fans. Yes, I was listening to those clips while you had him playing in mm-hmm. the intro, and it was so cool that you see fans. We had a ton of fans. Illinois had a ton of fans, and uh, it was just so good for the state of Illinois to have two ranked teams go at it. Um, just fortunate we came on top. Coach, tell us the game plan. Coming into the game, what was your game plan against Illinois? I tell you, so it's funny because I hold Crut to such a high standard, and, you know, his offense is passing. His, he does so many good things. Um, but I'm always on about his defense. And I literally said, all right, all right here's the deal. We, got, we, we were really doing a lot of different ball screen coverages. I go, you got, you got to really get up there, and we got to bottle up Io, an All-American. Then you got to roll back in the post and get on another All-American. <laughs> I'm like, how about that defensive assignment? And I mm-hmm. thought Crud had one of his best defensive games of, of his career. And, you know, our guys are smart. We, we, we're able to change up ball screen coverages. We're able to do things on different parts of the floor. And, uh, and it's just not something we do. We, we, we we worked at our defense all year long, and uh, the guys believe in it, and I thought, they were, like you said, he was really connected. I thought th- the philosophy of blitzing Io at the top when he's got the ball, and then you did a great job getting Crutwig to, I won't say front the post, but half man around the but just be really, really aggressive, and that's such a tough match inside. But the whole key for me, Porter, was – like, Braden Norris, if you go into a gym and you go, well, there's that guy and that guy and that guy, he's going to be like the last guy anyone takes, and that guy is what a glue player for you, and then he makes big shots. I remember talking to you, Cap, so many interviews, especially after the Final Four, and you know, and I was just saying that people were always, the outside noise saying, you got to recruit this guy, this guy, this guy now, and I just wanted to stay true to what, what I think is successful for us, and Braden's that guy, too. I mean, he's just tough as nails, high IQ. You look like you can go ISO him and take him one-on-one, and then he levels you off, and he, he, he moves his feet. And he gets the ball where you want. And literally, I think he played 80 minutes in the two games, like 80 hard minutes. Like some guys that play that many minutes will coast a little bit. He played 80 minutes. And I remember one time I, I was like, it was like 30 seconds before media timeout. Like I was about to take him out and give him a quick breather and then have the media and then put him in afterwards. And he's like, no, no. <laughs> like okay, <laughs> you know, because he just he just wants to play. But I, you know, what else I think was cool, Cap, is that uh, another thing when I got this job, you know, everybody said to me, you know, it's it's a it's a pro town, it's a pro town, and I said, no, it's a sports town, 
and Chicago will love you and embrace you if you play the right way. And just feel, I just, I, I just feel the passion of, of basketball in the state of Illinois. Yep. But I tell you what was really cool is that we didn't have any Illinois players. We had one Illinois player on our roster. And it was so apropos that you get two Illinois teams that are ranked playing to go to the Sweet 16, and our top three scorers were from Illinois. Cameron Crutwig, Lucas Williamson, and Marquise Kennedy were our top three scorers in that game yesterday. And I just thought that was really apropos. Awesome. Coach, what do you do to get the, the team involved defensively? We talked about this earlier, how man, def- defenses want to. And just watching Illinois, you know, watching the game yesterday, Cap, was like, for me, watching a regular season game in the Valley for Loyola as far as the defensive principles being laid down. So, Coach, talk to us about the defensive presence for your team against Illinois. What stood out most? You know, just we have a tremendous amount of respect for them. I mean, they, they, we didn't want the, the transition defense. We didn't want them going downhill. Whether it was downhill on a ball screen, we wanted to bottle it up. Whether it was downhill in transition, we wanted to make a wall in transition. We just we, we wanted to just not let them go downhill because we got such a respect for their transition game and their, their, their ball screen game when they're going downhill. And the other thing is you talked about Cameron getting on top. They also they do such a good job, of, of Illinois does, of getting the ball to Kofi from the top. We, we call it the funnel um, and, and getting it down. And that's – that's hard to trap and dig on because both wings are not on help side. When the ball's in the middle of the floor. Both wings are strong side, so you're lifted. And they get a great job of throwing it into him, and then he makes his move real quick, and it's hard to trap. So we were really trying to get crud on top and trying to get that pass coming in from the side so we could crowd it and dig it so there could be a help side. And, uh, and crud had to move. He really had to move more than he's ever moved before. And uh, we challenged him, and he did it. And, uh, and we still, Kofi still had 21. He's a tremendous player. And Curbelo, man, that kid, is, that kid is really good for Illinois. He gets the ball to him. He's an elite passer. He's low to the ground. They, they got really good players and, I, you know, and good classy guys, too. You know, after the game, they were really uh, respectful. I really, you know, I, I walked up the hallway. I saw a couple of them. They're just – it was really respectful guys. I know that had to hurt them, too. But uh, that – Coach Brad's got that program flying, doing a great direction, um, and uh, just really a lot of respect for him. I felt, and we're talking with Porter Moser, the great coach at Loyola, I felt like watching, and I had a bunch of your games this year, watching that team, I'm sure every coach conditions their guys. Your guys just look like they're better conditioned than people that they're playing. Why is that? I don't know. I mean, I, I, I don't have an answer for that. We, we, we work at it. I mean, we, we work at it. We, we, I, guess, I guess we're playing hard. We, we go live, too, a lot. Some people this late in the season, we kind of have a process where, you know, if we got four days for a game, those first couple days we're going at it hard. And then we pull back as the game approaches. And uh, we, had, we were here Sunday, and, and then we played, what, Georgia Tech on Saturday. Our first couple days of practice here, were, we went at it. I mean, we absolutely went at it. And uh, – you know, I think that's maybe part of it, but our guys, they're, they, they're conditioned to play hard, and that's credit to them. Coach, how great was this for Chicagoland to have, you know, everyone saw the brackets and said, well, what could be, but now it happens where you take on Illinois. But how great was this for Chicagoland? Is this something that we, we can see in the future more often? You know, and I love it. I mean, there's, Chicago has so many good high school coaches, high school players, high school programs. Um, all, and the suburbs all the way out and, 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 and throughout the state. And I know there's been some down years of basketball, but it's never the passion's never let up amongst these coaches and the basketball people of Chicago wanting this to go. And I just think it's really cool that, that, you, that, that teams are. There's a lot of other programs in our state that are on the rise. And I just think, that, you know, it's a basketball-rich rich city, and it just it only means that it keeps going up. And I love the fact that we were on stage last uh, yesterday, Illinois, and in Austin, but I think it means a lot for the Loyola fan base, though, you know, because to sustain this, to get back again, to, to not have it, you know, people, you know, this sustaining it, and but and, and how it went down, I think that it was really cool for Rambler fans to, to get that win. So you told me after you advanced in 18 that you called Rick Majerus' cell phone number, even though Rick's been gone for, I think, 11 years now. He, the jolly heavy set guy watching that game upstairs yesterday, I guarantee you is beaming how your team plays and more importantly, how you carry yourself as a head coach. How much was he in your mind as you prep and as you go through all this? 
because he helped you resurrect your career to the point where you're the hottest name in the country. No, Coach Majerus means so much to me. I mean, he, you know, spending four years with him, sitting in the boardroom with him and watching his mind twist and turn, game planning, and just taking four years of that. And, um, you know, he means so much to me, as, as well as my other mentor from Chicago, Tony Baroni. You know, I played for Tony at Creighton. He got me into the coaching profession. I was blessed. I had two great basketball minds pour into me. I'm very, very blessed. But, I, I you know, I, speaking of coach, I think about him often, Coach Majerus, and I, you can look at any old interview. I said this a thousand times during Crutwig's freshman year. I said, Coach Majerus would love Cameron Crutwig. I said it all the time. He would. And, <laughs> and, and, and I go, just cause he's, because he loves basketball. I'd go recruiting with Coach. I'd be like, all right, Coach, this kid's 6'10". He's like, the first question he'd ask, does he love basketball? Find out. Like, dig in. Like, that he had to know that, he, that the big loved basketball. He didn't want it because there's nothing worse than a big man that, that doesn't like to play. And Crut is just loves to play. He's smart. He doesn't pass the eye test. And and Coach Majerus didn't pass the eye test. And, you know, and they, they would have really loved each other. They would have gone out eating afterwards. They would have they would have really gotten along. Uh, but I just knew he would love Crutwig's game. You know, Coach, I, I just can't see you just being quarantined and sequestered in that room. I mean, from I mean, what what do you oh, do? I'm pacing right now. I know. I'm pacing right now. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting my steps in. I'm, I'm I'm walking around looking at the window, rocking around like the room. I mean, I just I'm going nuts. I want I want to get out. I know. We, like they gave us like it was like prison. They go, all right, you have a 30 minute block. You can go out and walk. There's a minor league baseball field across the street. I'm like, what is that? Our prison yard? We get to walk around the yard and <laughs> right and talk. And we literally went out. And I'm just walking around, just pacing outside. Got some fresh air and. We got to really be creative this week, just for the mental health of these guys. Yeah. I want them to enjoy it, have fun. We got to find some fun things we can do because it is it is a sacrifice. Like last time when we beat Tennessee, we came back at a huge celebration at Loyola. They had a big thing the whole week. We were home, saw our families regrouped, and then went on to Atlanta to play in the, uh, the Sweet Sixteen. Here we just come back to the hotel. We can't see family. We couldn't talk to friends. They just bust us right back to the bubble, and. Um, so we got to do some things because we don't play till Saturday to keep these guys enjoying it, enjoying each other, but also the mental part of it, of not feeling like you're just so isolated. Well, I can promise you this. My wife was on the phone yesterday with Rick Malnati, and there is a delivery on its way to you for your team to enjoy some great pizza. I mean, he did it last night. He's so great. He's, we sent just so many pizzas from the Indiana Indianapolis store over, man. We enjoyed the heck out of a great Chicago pizza meal last night. So there you go. I was sitting there watching games, and I hear my wife. I'm like, what are you doing? Oh, we're sending pizza to the Loyola team over at the hotel. Mike. It's awesome. It was awesome. It was, so, it was so good to get Chicago pizza. We've been here a week. Well, we are rooting for you. You know how much I adore you, and I hope it just continues, man. Likewise, my friend. See you guys. We'll talk soon. Thanks, Coach.